bit of a break now because the muse inside me is spent. <laughs> <laughs> but don't think we're going to do that. Oh, I think we should <laughs> while I recover. Let's uh, oh. move the spotlight off you a bit, Sad. Could we? And over towards your family. Oh, no, don't go there. <laughs> I'm going to go home to them. Uh, did we call your mum once on the show? Did that happen? I believe we did. Yes. But, you know, uh, a few people have faxed in today saying, look, you're calling up all your regulars, you're calling mm -hmm. up Gorinda. Mm -hmm. What about Sansi's parents? They haven't been on the show yet. You know, that's true. And they're always being mentioned. <laughs> Gypsy lady and the worm farmer. <laughs> And we've heard so many rumours and so much scuttlebutt about them from you, Sans. It's mm. hard to know what's true and what's not. It's all true. All yeah. true, yep. Well, I've stolen uh, their phone number out of your diary, so oh, just check oh, over the oh, phone. Oh, here we oh. go. And let's have a word to, well, oh, hopefully oh, no. the gypsy lady. You're looking just a tad nervous over there, Sans. <laughs> Now, are they back? Because I know they've been away. They, um... Some worm farming, stroke boot scooting convention. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <gasps> no, we're just mucking around. <laughs> Here we go. That'll be fun. Okay. Shh, shh. Here we go. Yes, yeah, Sans. Hello, is that Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Yeah. It's Tony Martin and Mick Malloy calling. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we work for your daughter. That's right. <laughs> How's things, Gypsy lady? <laughs> Not too bad. Not too bad? What are you uh, up to? <laughs> I don't know how to take you guys. Well, you must have heard the show. You'd have some... Uh, I know. That you'd have, worries, some, mate. you'd have some sort of plan worked out, what wouldn't you? What part of the show am I going to appear on? <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> and we're hoping your husband will join us for nutbags. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, it's been uh, oh, just over a year now that your uh, daughter's been in here. Right. Have you noticed any changes in her behaviour at all? I don't like committing myself to you guys. Come on. No way. She's here beside us. I know that. Come on. No. A lot more foul mouth than before. <laughs> Not as interested in the legitimate theatre. Is, <laughs> is that what you want to say to us? All those things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now she's been giving us a few tips. What's happening? You're off to Alaska. That's right. That's how far you prepared to go to get away from the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing that? Have you got all this taped? Jeez, you're very suspicious, Mrs. I Robinson. Know. You don't trust us at all, do you? Not at all, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you like us, don't you? Oh, poor old uh, Melton's still recovering from the um, hearing himself on radio, sitting there as innocent as you like. Oh, if you could furnish us with some more of his answering machine messages, it'd be good for the program. Oh, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of space still on our new CD. <laughs> <laughs> That's the frightening part. Hey, now, what's the story with his uh, frog that uh, goes ribbit uh, on, on, <laughs> on command? What's going on there? Well, I'm outside watering the garden. Well, you better pop in. We need to have a listen to this frog. <laughs> well, I'll have to go in the other door. That's all right. You take your time. Right. In you Nearly go. There. You've passed the worm farm. Yeah. And here's the frog. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> That just sounds like somebody jumping up and down on a bed. <laughs> it's Helmut Cole's minders. <laughs> <laughs> How much did he pay for that? Uh, I've got no idea. <laughs> Upward of 500 bucks, Sans is so. telling us. But he always tells me, I bought it for you, for your new flat. <laughs> I would want it. Oh, you guys have got me really worried, yeah, honestly. You should be. Yeah. We're taping this and we're sending it to the FBI. <laughs> we'll say we caught you out in the garden burying dead bodies. Uh, you tried to throw us off the scent with a frog that went ribbit. Right. <laughs> and uh, we're not buying it. No. And, you know, that visa to Alaska, that's going to be stamped cancelled for all time. <laughs> hey, how's uh, Milton's love of the village people developing? <laughs> We've heard all about that. <laughs> He'll never forgive you. <laughs> it's too late anyway. Where is he now? He's out at the will. He's told you that already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You'll never get that frog in CDs now. <laughs> you don't have that will there, do you? <laughs> He's out of it. <laughs> we can uh, rewrite it for you now if you want. <laughs> A few amendments. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're making sure we spend it all in any case. So, uh, let's get back to the village people. Must we? <laughs> <laughs> Which one's his favourite? <laughs> Fancy'd know more about it. Because... Uh, Fancy'd. <laughs> David Hodo. Who's that? 
<laughs> the construction worker. The construction yeah. worker's yeah. his yeah. favourite. Yeah. He's the one that doesn't know he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mrs Robinson. Yeah. We've got Mr. Methane coming in next week. Right. Uh, are you a fan of his work at all? Not really. No? <laughs> no I, I go along with your mother on that one. <laughs> We've also got the uh, Von Trapp kiddies from The Sound of Music. Yeah. And actually, we're hoping to team them up with Mr. Methane. <laughs> There's trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a spectacular and fragrant rendition of Edelweiss. Yeah. Here are a few of our favourite things. <laughs> Hey, don't worry, none of this will ever make it to air, Mrs Robinson. Oh, no. Because you're not saying anything. Hey, hey, come on, you two. If you're going to have a Barney, <laughs> have it after the show. This is going to air. <laughs> so well, we told you that, didn't we, Mrs Robinson? No, no. I, I'm sure we made that clear from the outset. Everything you said was going to be recorded. Oh, definitely. Played yes. on the program. Yes. Have you started packing for Alaska yet? No, we haven't unpacked from Meetung yet. Oh, you were up Meetung? Yeah. Right. Just walked in the door. Yeah, we heard the frog, says. <laughs> Well, look, it's probably time to let you off the hook. <laughs> We've got a bit of a song to go out on. Oh, yeah. And here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Oh, thank you. Jesus, hey, let's do some line dancing. Come on. Let's hear it. Get the frog going. <laughs> let's hear the frog. There you go. Oh, Senses run from the room in embarrassment. <laughs> we'll have a sing at something before the end of the program. Absolutely. But let's have some music now. It's somebody who's contributed so much to the show over the years mm. is uh, Dave Graney. He has. And remember what would Dave Graney do? Uh, <laughs> this is one of the very first things. <laughs> we I actually ran with that for two weeks. That's right. But uh, let's have some music from Dave at his, uh, his old band, the Coral Stakes. It's Martin Malloy, the last one. And thank you very much, Dave Graney and the Coral Stakes. Yeah, they're all in Perth tonight. Oh, they must I think be. they might be. Oh, I'm sure I would have dates somewhere. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> We've prepared nothing for this final show. <laughs> the dates you would have brought in would have been for yesterday anyway. <laughs> oh, OK, look, let's bring in someone now who's uh, been working with mm. us for nearly 10 years. It's mm. Pete Smith. Hey. How are you, Pete? Thank you, boys. And we have to bash him through because it's way past his bedtime. <laughs> Good, e Good evening to you both. Now, we have no idea at this point how long this show's going to go. Oh, no, no. What's going to happen if we uh, cross the 7 o'clock mark, Gracie? We don't want to lose all our stations out in the country because mm. they have to hear our musical finale. Oh, they have to hear the ending. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Don't go hey. away. Hey, hey, sit down and have a fag, ugly <laughs> Phil. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> now, Pete. <laughs> Pete, what sort of condition are you in at the moment? I'm semi-condition, you know. I'm a raspberry and lemonade man, but somebody, just as I walked into the studio, handed me one of those uh, rejects from Godinsky. <laughs> ah, the old big bastard yeah. bottle of Moe. Yeah, one of those. And uh, I got stuck into that before I realised what it was. And <laughs> mm, I quite like the taste. Uh, mm. Is it time to recall one of Pete's finest moments? Some Art Malloy. Could we? Do you want to do that? Yeah, I reckon. Uh, Here's a special treat for the listeners. We sent Pete Smith down there this <laughs> afternoon. He had nothing better to do. So we said, Pete, we want you to go down to Madame Tussauds and just mm. stand there in your best tuxedo and don't move and see what happens. Yeah. I think he's he's mic'd up. He's got the earpiece. And we're going to cross uh, now. Pete, uh, can you hear us? Yes, yes I can, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, can you... Describe exactly where you are. I'm just standing near the entrance to the Chamber of Horrors. Just a sec, somebody's coming. Just a sec. OK. OK, they've gone. It's all right. They don't seem very interested in me. The Chamber of Horrors, is that where they've got the Michael Jackson? <laughs> don't, don't make me laugh. OK. <laughs> Pete, uh, how long have you been standing there exactly? Oh, about two and a half hours, Tony. Just, just hang on a minute. A, oh, 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 a bloody dog pissing on my leg. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> OK. And, uh, mm. Pete, which celebrities can you see from where you're standing? Uh, if I just squint sideways, I can see Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, left muscle. <laughs> it's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's so lifelike. And uh, who's on the other side? The other side is... Uh, Oh, God, I can't recognise. I don't want to move my head, Tony. You know what I mean? Oh, it's, it's here, a Depardieu, sitting on a chair. Right, so you're in a Depardieu Schwarzenegger sandwich. Stop it. Hey, Pete, Pete, uh, what sort of interest have you been attracting yourself? There's been a lot of retirees looking at me. <laughs> Has anyone, Pete, come up and grabbed you on the arse? No, 
not yet. All right. Well, you hang in there for another couple of hours. I'm sure it's not too far away. Yeah, well, when can I come back to the studio? <laughs> OK, Pete, I think it's time we maybe got you to burst into life. Yeah. Because I imagine you have to maybe pop over to the two sodes gents. Well, it's just about time. Listen, uh, there's a couple of doddering old ladies coming along, will I? Yeah, that's perfect. OK, you know what to do, Pete. Yeah, right. Shh, just a sec. Just the sale of the century! <laughs> Pure gold! There you go, it's all coming back now, Pete. Pure gold. I almost smell the wax. And, you know, <laughs> here's what we're going to do. Uh, Pete's done a few songs on this program. We've already played his duets, but uh, there's a few surprises for you coming up in our musical mega mix. Oh, you mm. feature heavily, Pete. In the uh, fourth hour of the show. <laughs> Mind you, my voice was much lighter then. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to think, when did we start working with Peter? It was on the ill-fated Late Show That's pilots right. at Channel 9. Mm. Yep. Then he worked on Bull Twang. Correct. Then on the Degeneration Breakfast yep. Show. Then we had you uh, on the Late Show singing yep. a few yeah. heavy metal numbers. Exactly. Yeah. Then you accompanied us on tour for a brief period, occasionally. Mm. That's yes. right. Yeah. And now this. And next year you'll be joining us on the lucrative theatre restaurant circuit. Oy. How do you look Quite in a toga? Out. I look good. <laughs> As if we didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many times yeah. have you toged up? I don't know. I toged up a lot and opened a hell of a lot of doors for Graham Kennedy in the old days, as I must say. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, Pete, uh, you don't have to go anywhere in a hurry, do you? I'm not in a hurry. You've yeah. got to see this baby out till the end. Yeah. You betcha. And, you know, something that's been a feature of Martin Malloy over the years, Mick, has certainly been contraceptive information. It's true. We've been at the vanguard of mm. health issues. <laughs> yes. And some of the products that we've uh, floated... Mm. Uh, check Check this out. Hey guys, looking for a contraceptive that's effective, sensitive and got a cheeky sense of fun about it? Then get yourself a packet of Martin Malloy Balloon Animal Condoms. The days of fumbling around in the dark like a hapless clown just when things start getting messy are a thing of the past thanks to these little babies, which have turned the awkward and often embarrassing procedure of donning a condom into a show-stopping highlight of even the most steamy of sessions. You'll know when the time is right to impress your lady, not only with your sensible approach to safe sex, but also with the hastily constructed giraffe now clinging to your pecker. Allow me to demonstrate the amazing versatility of this revolutionary new product. Please, meet my good friend, the billy goat. Or, how about, the squirrel to get the juices flowing. And lads, trust me when I tell you, you'll never go home empty-handed once you've gone to work on... The Sausage Dog. Now that's man's best friend. What's that I hear you say? Looks difficult? Well, it's not, because each packet of balloon animal condoms comes complete with easy-to-follow instructions and a complimentary puncture kit. Here's what some of our many satisfied customers have had to say about new balloon animal condoms. Hi, I'm Dave, and my partner didn't seem overly interested in sex, but when I pulled back the sheets to reveal a meticulously crafted melon head whale, she was putty in my hands. Thanks, Martin Malloy. G'day. Not only have I had incredible sex every night since using these condoms, I've also managed to win red faces. Thanks, guys. Lots of guys can make love like a tiger, but look. <laughs> I can make love with a tiger. So, for the ultimate contraceptive experience, grab a packet of Martin Malloy balloon animal condoms. They'll bring out the animal in anyone. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Wait! What about protection? Ah, allow me. Wow, check out the antlers on that. <laughs>
The last one was you, Pete, wasn't it? You just added that on the end. I could never have handled that. <laughs> Yes, I remember you yeah. and my mother together one night, oh, caning man. the pants off Mr. Mefo. Remember that? Yes, indeed. Mm. Hey, uh, Mick, is it time to get back to some of the uh, people we phoned up and pestered over the years? Oh, that's a good call. One of my favourite uh, people we spoke to is because we got this rumour was going around, I think it was mentioned earlier in the uh, Seven Wonders thing, that the Bendigo talking tram had been bad-mouthing us. That's right. Remember we heard it had been <laughs> yeah. slagging us off? That's right. So we called up the uh, officers, or the, I don't know, the... <laughs> The tram port, <laughs> the depot. <laughs> That's what we called it up, the International Tram Depot in Bendigo, and spoke to uh, this bloke. There you go. Good afternoon, Bendigo Tramways. Oh, hello, who's that? Ashley Perrot. Hello, Ashley, it's Tony Martin and Mick Malloy here. We were championing your uh, talking tram on the radio last year. We made it one of our seven wonders of Australia. Mick Malloy. Ringing any bells? No. <laughs> <laughs> we had a nationwide poll to locate the seven wonders of Australia and the talking tram came in at number three. Did it? I reckon that tram probably talks more than you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> the, the tram's never caught short for a word, is it? No. What's it saying these days? Nothing much, only like, uh, uh, the same tape plays, of course. Oh, I see. They want some sort of Betty Boo style fakery. <laughs> what are you suggesting? The tram doesn't do its own talking. That's what I expect from the Spice Girls in concert. Not the <laughs> men to go yeah. talking tram, my friend. Uh, so I've only just been conducting all last week, except Thursday, um, during the um, last week of holidays. Oh, yeah. I mean, flat out. Like, um, like we see our skills have gone back, but last week was still the last week of the New South Wales and South Australian holidays. Mm. And I like to do conducting it because our kids have gone back to school. No, I can't follow a word of this. Put the tram on. <laughs> what are you saying, Ashley? You've only been on there for a week. No, no, I was doing conducting for for a week. Right, that wouldn't be enough time to develop much of a rapport with the tram. No, because you're so doing the five just backwards and forwards, you're getting the same commentary all the time. Oh, okay. Now, the reason we're calling is we're keen to find out if Pauline Hanson has taken an interest in the talking tram. No, no, no not that I know of. She, has, she hasn't... Um, been on the tram at all. Right. I asked Dennis yesterday, was, um, was, she, was, was her and John Howe going to be on the tram? He said no. We were speaking to Dennis earlier. Yeah. And he says that uh, Pauline Hanson could be the new voice of the talking tram. Oh, God, wouldn't that be the day? You think that could work? <laughs> I would not know, would it not? You know, people just driving past mm. points of local interest are quick. Please explain. Yeah. <laughs> Going past any Malaysian restaurants mm. in the region? I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, if people aren't sure whether their exit's coming up or not... I'd be the first one to tell them where to get off. It could work! <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, Ashley? Yeah. What about when people get to the end of the run, though, Mick? Mmm, let's see. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's finished with. It's something that's happened, but it's finished with. It's gone now, it's in the past. See, people would know that they've arrived at their destination. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ashley. Yeah? Have you ever thought of becoming the voice of the talking tram yourself? No, not really. God, give us a burst. What's the kind of thing the talking tram would say, Ash? Yeah, well, the well, tape always talks about things on, on the left-hand side as it goes along. OK, so say it. And I'll say, like, coming up on the left, you'll, you'll see the highly ornate National Bank, you know, with, with this, like, fancy... Um, columns and all that. <laughs> one thing you'll find with the tourist um, on board, that's one thing, you, um, there's quite a few tourists I find when I was conducting in that, like, yeah. don't, don't know their right from their left, <laughs> and, and, and you're, you're forever always pointing to the object as you go along, and they're like, oh, that's where, that's where that, that tape's talking about. Uh, Tone, Frank Tandy seems to have fallen on his feet, doesn't he? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hasn't been out of Parliament long in Bendigo. What about the Prime Minister? You haven't cited him? No, I I asked Dennis yesterday was he going to be on the tram and said no. Where's the tram right now? Should we be heading back towards the mine? Uh, It's the last tour for the day. As it gets troppy towards the end of the day? Is he going, this is the last one, you lot? Yeah. (laughs) After this, I'm done. (laughs) Hey, what do you think of our idea of getting a sort of an after-dark talking tram show happening where it drops a bit of blue material? Do you like that idea? Um, Yeah. (laughs) It could work. (laughs) Hey, Ashley, what are you wearing right now, if you don't mind us asking? No, I wear what you call a yard uniform. Yeah. yeah. Like the navy blue jumper and shirt and the blue trousers. Right, sort of a village people look. <laughs> village people? I wouldn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I can't, can't.
Okay. So, but when, when, so I got one when I was conducting last, I got to wear the proper navy blue trousers and white shirt and that. I was all, all dialed up doing the conducting and that. Does Dennis know about this? Yeah. Are you sure you ran it by he, him first? He, ma- he made me wear them. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're wearing the uniform now? No, no, no not, not the conducting one. I'm only just wearing off in a normal yard uniform now. Oh, yeah, OK. What about popping down to wherever Pauline Hanson is and just pretending to be one of her bodyguards? Oh, I wouldn't think so. Just <laughs> get up beside her and just talk into your collar every five minutes. <laughs> I, 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 I think I'd scare people away. <laughs> you think so? Oh, I think I, there's other people scaring people away better than you, pal. <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> well, Ashley, thanks for your time today. Yeah. Any Cheerios you'd like to send out to anyone listening today? No. No song we can play you? No. What's your favourite song, Ashley? Come on. So, see, I don't care if there's modern rubbish in today that, 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 that the Wilds is playing at, that, that loud screaming rubbish. Oh, that. we don't like that stuff either, do we, mate? No, no, it's no. Live feel like, like the old 50s, 60s style stuff. Gotcha. We'll see what we've got. We'll see if we've got anything you like here. Fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. Do you like that one? Fruit Never heard of it. <laughs> it's one of these modern groups that the kids get into. Yeah, no, don't go for that rubbish. Yeah, it is rubbish, isn't it? No, it's kind of catchy. You wait, the tram will be singing this tomorrow. <laughs> it will be. All right, enough of the devil's music. We're infecting the people of Bendigo. Thanks for talking to us, Ash. I'll see you later. See you on the tram. Oh, shit. Oh, jeez. Oh, hey, Tone. Why are they overacting? Well, Mick, I've got two great movies on video. Look, The Magnificent Seven and The Mambo Kings. You're right, they are great movies. But I've only got time to watch one of them. The question is, which one? Tone, tone, tone. The answers are simple as falling off a log. I've tried that, Mick, but as you can see, these two classics remain unviewed. Tone, listen to me. You need new Martin Malloy combined movies. Martin Malloy combined movies? What are you talking about? The geniuses at Martin Malloy have taken dozens of classic movies and combined them, so now you can enjoy two or more of your cinematic favourites in the one convenient sitting. Bloody hell! For example, Example, why waste time sitting through both The Magnificent Seven and The Mambo Kings when now you can watch The Magnificent Seven Mambo Kings? Quick, whack it on! Uh, Guido, a village is done for. We cannot withstand one more attack from Carlos and his banditos. But wait, look, riding out of the sunset, it's those seven ruthless vigilantes we've heard so much about. happened here? Carlos and his men, they have looted our village. Hmm, men, I think we should pay this Carlos a visit. Form a conga line. Let's go! Carlos, open this door immediately. Who is it? It's us, the Mambo Kings. Okay, come in. Do you surrender? Ha! You walk straight into my trap! Banditos! Quick, man! Let's mambo! Uh, you win, mambo kings! Okay, now let's return to the village and receive our hero's welcome! Form the line! Listening to Martin Malloy for more combined movies. Well, you might think that the show should end there. To dream on. Do we want to bust into a fourth hour? I've got tonsils of steel. You know, you might think we're... (laughs) (laughs) What are your tonsils? They're steel. What are they going to do? They're going to hurl me across the microphone. (laughs) How many has he had, everybody? (laughs) 
not as many as Pete Smith. I'm hooked up to a vodka drip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might think that we're running out of clips to play. <laughs> yeah. But, Mick, here's uh, one of my favourite clips involving yeah. you and John Michael Howson. Check this out. Who's got a question for John Michael first? Debbie's going to open up today. How are you, Deb? Good, thanks, guys. That's the way. Would you like to ask John Michael something? I certainly would. Mm. John Michael. Yes, can Deb. Can you explain to me Cindy Crawford? Yeah. Gone model, gone movie star. Now a sex therapist? Well, <laughs> is that true? She could actually be selling lino on, on uh, Home Shopping Network because if you saw the movie she made, yes. that would be her one and only effort. Fair she game. was truly... She is lucky that she's got... She should be given herself therapy. <laughs> Fair game. That terrible movie. Now, the se sex therapist... Well, didn't you have Sophie Lee here being a sex therapist? Yeah, on a yeah. Well, yeah, what's I mean, wrong with that? Well, yeah, she's there, our there, resident there, sex there therapist on the show. <laughs> there you go. Go. I mean, I wouldn't really like to have a problem and ask either Sophie or, or Sydney to help. Well, Actually, I, I ask her on numerous occasions, John. <laughs> you, yes, I do. Mostly in the middle of the night. Uh, you'd be dead right. <laughs> you have no idea how close you are. Hello. You do have your finger on the pulse, John. Uh, right now. <laughs> oh, look. Uh, Mickey, I'll tell you what, to make it up to you, yeah. to make it up to you, uh, what co uh, sort of music do you want us to play uh, as we head into the fourth hour? What band, any band at all, has been mentioned on the show over the years? Got any kiss? I was there and you were home in yeah. the band. Yeah, it was a school night. <laughs> He's lost it now. No. Pete Smith was actually playing the air guitar to that song, and you know what that is? He's that got the Gene Simmons makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's the track you'll be seeing uh, in the ad for Pete Smith's Specialities, Volume 10. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get there eventually. You know, in about 20 years from now, that's the song you'll be doing on the Midday Show. Don't you knock it. It's <laughs> bubbling along it's very bubbling nicely. Along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gadinsky will be back in a minute. Yeah. Oh, begging, goal. begging, Gadinsky. What have you found, Gracie? Just a whole bunch of random... Is this something with us and Malcolm McLaren yeah. from years ago, was it? Hold on, there's a big fire. There's a big emergency fire going on in here in the Hilton in Adelaide. Oh, my God, some guys come over the loudspeakers. Here we go. I can't be bothered to get out of bed. They can burn the goddamn place down. <laughs> Anarchy. <laughs> Anarchy in Adelaide. That's exactly what it needs down here. Here we go. Listen to this. <laughs> we can't take you anywhere, Malcolm, can we? And Malcolm, with the flames licking at your door, one final question. On your passport, what do you list as your occupation out of interest? Oh, without a question of doubt, a flower seller. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking to florist Malcolm McLaren. Thanks for talking to us today. What's going on there? And the hotel subsequently burnt, burnt to the ground around Malcolm McLaren. <laughs> That's right. He was the only thing left standing. <laughs> Uh, have you got something the, the mix said to Ida Buttrose? Yeah, Ida, can I ask you something about your personal life? You can yes, tell me Mick. to run away. You right, can uh, refuse to answer, but are you still celibate? Run away, Mick. Run away, Mick. Because <laughs> our producer is... Uh, that was the only reason I asked. Uh, uh, involuntary, so. Yeah. Um, but I just thought you might have a couple of tips for him how to hang in during those tough years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh. There's a sealed section in his trousers. <laughs> You know, how much crap have we talked on segments like Nutbags and Please Explain? Oh, more than enough. I think we got something here, haven't we, Gracie? Have we? Yeah, uh, sorry, yes, here we go. <laughs> Every couple of years, yep. out come the Nutbags mm. suggesting that Hitler is still alive. Now, okay. I don't know how old Hitler would be now mm -hmm. if he was still alive, but he'd be getting on. You'd think so. Uh, and have a look at this. Hitler claims backed. An Argentine newspaper has added yet another titbit to the never-ending claims that Hitler's still alive. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Some bloke went to Rio and said he was travelling to Buenos Aires, sorry, for a meeting with our beloved comrade Hitler. Now, hmm. as I've said before, they found Hitler's jaw. <laughs> It was confirmed as Hitler's jaw and bottom teeth. That's right. What an ingenious escape. <laughs> I mean, what, what price escape for Hitler? <laughs> You'd want the big injection in the dentist chair, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, how's he chewing? <laughs> no, no, I'm just going to ask this. How's he chewing? <laughs> Bashing his top set of teeth up and down on top of the table. <laughs> <I think. laughs> it must take ages for a cob of corn. It must take bloody ages.
It would be nigh on impossible. That would be a primetime telly show. Tonight, Adolf Hitler <laughs> eats a cob of corn. <laughs> That's outrageous, baby. It's, you can't, you know, the, the situation where something so shocking, your jaw drops to the ground. No, it's just constantly... <laughs> for, Hitler's just constantly in shock. <laughs> Bloody hell! Okay, I just I don't I can't follow it when uh, people bring up these Hitler claims. No, uh, what do you got there? Ah, uh, this is in today's papers too. Check this out for mm. a weird story. Mm. Morticians at two private morgues mm. fought for custody of a corpse in a Manila hospital, prompting Philippine police to step in. <laughs> A custody battle. So what, you know, like uh, morgue workers are like tow truck drivers these days, are they? <laughs> they, they, they? Hang on, I was first on the scene. I've got it. Back off, buddy. It's mine. It's mine. But listen to this. Six mortuary staff were involved in the brawl yeah. in which guns were fired and three people were... Tra- oh, now they're driving up their own business. We're going to make a fortune out of this. Keep firing. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Did the dead bloke get shot at all, do we know? <laughs> That'd be a hard one to explain. Oh, great. Now I'm going to have to do this autopsy all over again. Oh, I know. I'll think I missed that. I'll be accused of doing old material, said the coroner. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. Just two more groups of morticians fighting mm. over it. Like, like two seagulls squabbling over a chip. A dead chip. Look at this. <laughs> A dead chip. That's this program for four years. Yep. A couple of seagulls squabbling over a chip. <laughs> uh, we've got more. Don't think we haven't. It is. You know, you talk about Hitler. Yeah, sure. Didn't we have some kind of... What was the story with Pol Pot? They had a... Uh, mm. Show trial. Show trial. A humiliating dinner and show trial. <laughs> 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 but it, it was described as a humiliating show. They set up a carport in the jungle. That's right. And it frankly... I wiped was, a scarf on him. And it, it, was, it wasn't even remotely humiliating. No, it wasn't. So we took that to task. I think if you got... Just play it, Grace. But no, the Fumio goes to... Paul Pot! Yes. The former Khmer leader who was forced this week to endure a humiliating show trial Mm. as opposed to the more traditional humiliating dinner and show trial. (laughs) They they love those in Cambodia. (laughs) Absolutely. And Mick, a lot of people have been suggesting in the press that perhaps the humiliation of Paul didn't go Mm. far enough. Mm. Wasn't humiliating enough. True. And I think you came up with the right idea earlier in the week on the show. What about a celebrity roast? Mm. Well, no one seems to have bitten. (laughs) No. No one seems to be setting it up, so we've had to do it ourselves. Live from the scene of his humiliating show trial, it's former Khmer Rouge strongman Pol Pot and all your favourite celebrities in the first annual Pot Roast with roast hosts Jim Whaley Good evening. and Rodney Rude. <laughs> OK, let the Pot Roast begin. Thank you, thank you and welcome to the heart of the North Cambodian jungle, or as it'll be known after tonight, the roasting fields. <laughs> you all know the rules. Everyone gets just one cheap shot at the toppled gorilla leader. Let's go round the panel. Firstly, from the United States, President Bill Clinton. Hey, Paul. <laughs> kiss it. I said kiss it. <laughs> from Russia. We're joined by President Yeltsin. (laughs) Very good. Next up, it's the Pope. I remember one time when Paul tried to steal my job. He wanted to be known as Pope Pol Pot. (laughs) Hey, Pope Pol Pot. (laughs) Next up, our Australian contingent, Pauline Hanson. What did you say when you heard about Paul's involvement? in the death of over two million Cambodians. Please explain. (laughs) Next, from the Collingwood Football Club, it's Aaron James with his own humiliating ritual. (laughs) Pointing Percy at Pol Pot, as it were. (laughs) Thank you. What social event would be complete without Totty Goldsmith? I love a man in uniform. I think Paul's kind of sexy. I'd love to be known as his potty goldsmith. (laughs) Very good. John Michael Halson, anything to say? (laughs) 
Next up, it's Jason Donovan. I'm only here because somebody said something about wicked pot. (laughs) (laughs) And finally, John Laws. What do you think should be done with Paul? I command the sheriff to lead you away to some remote spot, to swing you by the neck from a knotting bough of some sturdy oak and let you hang until you're dead. (laughs) I further command that such officer retire quickly from your dangling corpse, that vultures may descend from the heavens upon your filthy body until nothing shall remain but bare, bleached bones of a cold-blooded, bloodthirsty, throat-cutting, murdering son of a bitch. That always frightens me, that clip. Oh, it's fantastic. Pete Smith's cowering in the corner. Oh, He's got to get his do- own 0005 line up, don't he? Oi. You know, have we gone way... P- I mean, we're never going to play cruel by human nature, are we? No. Nah. It's we're get simply not going to happen. it out. Time for another flashback. Let's do it. Remember that elephant that went missing? Oh. Here's a story we've been hearing about. There's an elephant on the loose in Victoria. <laughs> there is indeed. It's escaped from a circus. Mm. From the Perry Brothers Circus. <laughs> Nothing to do with Tommy Hanlon Jr. Oh, no. He's not implicated in this Mm-mm. controversy. Uh, it's, it's pretty close to Bendigo. Yeah, it's dangerously close. Uh, hello to everyone working down there on the talk and tram. Mm. I think we should... It's uh, Donolly Way. Mm. It's fairly close to Bendigo. Let's give the Donolly uh, police station a call. And get the latest. See how the investigation's going. Any luck over there, Gracie? Oh, here we go. Good afternoon, police at Donolly. Hello, it's Tony Martin and Mick Malloy calling from the radio. How you going? <laughs> how are you today, sir? All right. What's your name? It sounds shit house as you can hear Sometimes when we touch The honesty is too much I wanna hold you, girl And let this fear in me subside I wanna know what's going on What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Been spending all my time living in a gangster's paradise. Here I come to save the day. That means that mighty mouse is on the way. Because he's married an anti-psychopath He's got a list of people that he's probably going to kill And according to the voices in his head He's had a lot of cops and the press sniffing around But they almost always end up dead The last time that someone tried to link him to a murder He played off all the skin and wore it as a girdle Because he is a psychopath So I wouldn't make him angry Because he can get quite hungry And when he does he likes to eat your testes in a bun Oi! Machines and overalls, we do our little dance. The parents never seem to mind that we're not wearing pants. Crazy lesbians full of beans. Crazy lesbians full of beans. David Boone was a man, yes, a big man, with an eye like an eagle and a belly like a beagle had he. Boone zone. It's not time to make a change. Just relax and take it easy, mate. My friends say I'm acting wild as a bug. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. called Susie Maroney. She lives in the sea just like an abalone. 
when she breaks a record, she does it on her own. He... Don't try ringing her on her mobile phone. He... I love her, she loves me, and that's the way it ought to be. Wearing nothing but a swimsuit and a bucket of Kentucky. <laughs> Waiting for a New England I'm waiting for Major's last to run I'm waiting for whoever took it To please bring back my guitar We're never gonna survive Unless we get a little crazy I've never once Wore a hat with a little propeller On the top I've never boasted that I've slept with Gareth Evans. Gareth, I love you. Because he's just a normal cat with a shit. Down the poop shoot. Down the poop shoot now. <laughs> Your pair of sore knees has got you on the run But really, Mrs. Kennett, if you're worried about the sun You really should avoid staring up your husband's bum It's been a hard day's night And I've been working like a dog It's been a hard day's night I should be sleeping like a log Om 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 Take it so much speed that I just do not seem to care. I'm wearing five pairs of red purple pants. Give me a shape up. Oh, hello, Bully. Cause I need a man. Is that right? Mm, in my heart, on you. Or me? So listen up. I'm listening. If you want North Queensland. Yes, go on. Do my preferences be to come to Nothing left is nothing left for me to do. You're the one that I want. You are the one that I want. Hey, 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 Pauline, the one that I want. Yes, you're the one that I want. Hey, 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 Pauline, the one that I want. That's right, the one that I want. Hey, hey, hey. I need your brain. I need your name. Please explain. We're both the same. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much love drives a man insane. You break my will. Oh, what a thrill. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. That's the last time that we had a conversation. I decided we I should be we friends. But now, now we're going, going round in circles. Tell me, will this day show to you never end? end. No, now you tell me that you're falling, falling in love. Well, I never ever thought that would be me. I want her, I want her. I want her, I want her, I want to really, really, really want to sing a zing, ha! Oi! Barty boy! I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want! I want her, I want her, I want her, I want her! What do you want? I don't know! But you must want something! I wouldn't mind a root! Sandwich and 
Side one. <laughs> Can you remember doing any of that, Big Malloy? Not at all. There was a couple of rude shocks in there, my friend. <laughs> what was the rose? When well, did you sing that? I'm sure there was a very valid reason. Because <laughs> yeah. you don't just come up with such a moving rendition yeah. on the spot was, unless you're singing it with meaning. It was probably satire of some sort. I'm I imagine so. Is it the part of the show where we have to thank everybody? I think uh, we're there. Most of the people who need a thank you are in this room. And we'd like to begin with our producer, Gracie, a man who put his extremely active and gymnastic sex life on hold for four years in order to drive this sucker home every day. Yep. The drought is over, Gracie, and you are now officially available. <laughs> Ladies take a number. <laughs> and, Gracie, uh, you've always been sensational. I, I think you've done a fantastic job. And, by the way, I think we're peaking in the right channel. You're just <laughs> What about another phony round of applause for our assistant for the last two years, Sansia, who turned her back on legitimate hey. theatre and credibility in order to come in here and have regular bouts of fictional sex with Pete Smith, uh, <laughs> you know, track down Rick Parfitt when necessary and answer the phones with a jaunty hot poo. <laughs> Give her a round. Hey, let's not forget our original assistant, Emma. That's right. Uh, currently part of the witness protection scheme. <laughs> That's right. Our brilliant uh, production supervisor, Vicky Ma, who's oh, never Vicky. once said, the giant peach bursting out of Marlon Brando's ass. It can't be done. <laughs> never once said anything like that. No. Brilliant. Peter Smith. Uh, Petey boy. Well, nine years and we're still not out of things for you to do, Pete, although we... You know, had you suspended from your nipples a la Richard Harris and a man called Horse a couple of weeks back, and I thought, you know, yeah. <laughs> we're time, getting close. Time for that lie down. Big yep. round for Pete. On you, Pete. Thank you. Here he is. <laughs> yes. Wake him up. <laughs> ah, no. And, of course, the unofficial seventh member of the team, our lawyer and advisor, Greg Sitch, a man who wasn't afraid to play hardball with Mr Methane's management a few weeks ago. <laughs> Didn't he give them an ass-kicking? <laughs> He's putting a newspaper over his face. We're on the radio. <laughs> you should see him. Every time he goes to court, he pulls his jacket over his head. <laughs> who gave us a job when nobody else would? That would be Brad March. Give him yeah, a Yeah, thank you very much, Brad. And all the team here, Peter Ma uh, Harvey at Osteria. Thank you. Peter. Am I pissed? I can't even say Ah, uh, you're gone. Well, what about John Kirby and John all the team? Kirby. They, they've got no idea what we do, but they're impressed nonetheless. Well, 
They give us a job. And all the other suits around the joint who we may have slagged off on the program. <laughs> you know who you are. But what about the listeners, Mickey? What about the contributors? Have you written a few down? Oh, there's a few here. Matthew Parkinson, thank you very much. Yes. For that man, the waif look is always in. Jude and... <laughs> Jude and Kaz, the foxy ladies, oh, yeah. <laughs> they were uh, seen being uh, dragged behind Mr. Nude Australia. That's right. One on each ankle. <laughs> All the way home last night. <laughs> Hesse, back in your shed, buddy. Uh, Gilbo, you know what he's going to do? What's he's he going to be pulling Gary out of the audience, Bruce Springsteen style, at his right? Labor Club giving Canberra oh, next week. Fantastic. Glenn Robbins, thank you very much. Working Dog, everyone at Working Dog, Tom, mm. Jane, Rob and Santo, you know, we all still know the old secret handshake. Every time we get together <laughs> with those guys. Yeah. Uh, Dave Graney and Claire Moore, Australia's own captain, and Tennille. Uh Trevor Marmalade, Bert Newton, thank you, Bert. Frank Tanty, the Tanty man. Tim Rogers, who couldn't be here because he's in L.A. chasing Stevie Nicks around with a bendy <laughs> straw. <laughs> We're not allowed to play that bit again. No, we can't. Uh, Greg said no. Uh, uh, Glenn A. Baker, our very first guest on the program. Thank yeah. you very much. The legendary... Hang on, I think if you go to that, he's still talking. He was <laughs> four years later. He was still being... 19th nervous breakdown. <laughs> the interesting thing about that... <laughs> it's true. Uh, the legendary Bud Tingwell. Yep. Uh, Mr. Methane. He cuts the cheese with the greatest of ease. He certainly does. I think it's true. Peter Rosethorn, that bloke saw out five Frankenfurters in the time he <laughs> contributed on this show. That's true. Dave O'Neill, yeah. uh, I spoke to him before. He finally nailed Sands last Is that night. Right? Yes. Oh, That's. <laughs> There's a round of applause. You could have waited, Dave. We've been looking for a big finale. Uh, <laughs> Catherine Garrett, uh, who originally did the voices for us. Yeah. You can call her Kath, but to me she'll always be Mrs. Wedgie. <laughs> Gorinda, thank you very much, yeah. who I saw coming out of a toilet the other day with a turban stuck to one of his heels. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he dragged it all the way downtown. It was very embarrassing. He has still got that 1.5 metre lolly snake. That's right. Just, On the rack, stretching right. it as we speak. True. Down the sandwich shop, Derek and Michelle, thank you very much. Uh, we'll pay our account Monday. Uh, that's right. That's right. Tony Nassar, yeah. uh, the human saxophone, Haskell Daniel, the yeah. chairman of the board and the silly names department. Chris noises? Silly noises. Silly noises. Thank you. I am pissed. <laughs> Christine from Perth, who's probably the only person more pissed than me. She'll be blowing into a bag somewhere right now. Rocky Warren down yeah, at uh, Penrith Panthers. That's right. Uh, Mrs. Beaton cost us a fortune in flowers. That's right. Every time she appeared on this show, it looked like Kensington Palace out the front of her joint. Apparently she's been listening in Devonport today and she's already filed three complaints. So we'll be <laughs> passing them straight on to the broadcast. Good for her. Daniel and family, yeah. you are the real heroes of this country. Sergeant Mick Malloy, I'm still getting your part. Parking tickets. Frida of Christchurch, forget the old bag from Titanic. This woman can act. Michael Bolton of Wagga, Norbert, well, just for being Norbert. And yeah. you know, if I could think of anything nice to say about my own mother, she'll be the first to know. <laughs> Thank you, one and all. I'm sure we've left out probably that many people again. Thank you for those anonymous, unlisted people. But, uh, Mick, we always close the show every year in mm -hmm. a, a very special way. Mm. Just me, you and Pete. Yep. It is time to simply sing. Sing. Sing a song. Sing out loud, sing out strong. Sing of good things, not bad. Sing of happy, not sad. Sing, sing a song. not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing. Sing a song. La, 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 Ah, uh -huh. 
Cooper. La 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 la. And is that it? Are we off? Yep. Yeah, all clear. So, Gracie, we're done. Yeah, that's done. Okay. Well, we better get going. Uh, Gracie, yep. you have yourself some top shelf sex, all right? Yep. Okay. Sure. Here's, here's the keys to the black thunder. Uh, what's that rocking tonight? <laughs> Get on your chair. Enjoy mate. yourself. Thanks, guys. See you, Sands. See you, guys. See you, babe. Thanks for everything. Mm. Good luck moving back in with your parents. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah you assholes. Hey, and tell the worm farmer my ass is a bit itchy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's Vicky. Hey. Hey, Vic. Hi. Uh, we'll see you at the next Melrose party, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, the season's finished for the year. Oh, mm. oh, well, you can come to our Baywatch Nights party. Okay. Mm. That's next Tuesday. See ya. Bring yeah. some chips. Too bad. Mm. I think that hissy was off his nut. Oh, no more than usual. Mm. Mm. What about Simon Morley's big finale? Yeah, you know, you know what? I mean, I, I really like it. Yeah. But uh, do you think it's starting to get a little sad? I reckon he's repeating himself. I mean, at the end of the day, it is just a grown man playing with his genitalia. That's true. Mm. There we go. Oh, look! Gracie's brought the EA trout. Hey! All right, here we go. I thought there'd be a fruit plant around here somewhere. Crazy. Those be full of beans. Oh, oh, thanks, fellas. They've gone without me. Thanks a lot, fellas. Oh, for God's sake, after all I've done for them, four years, I've put my career on the... Oh, I can't believe this. Not a sign of them. What a rotten tooser. Full of <laughs> Get in, you old carrot, do you? Come on. Loosen that bow tie, for God's sake. Oh, <laughs> full of beans. Thanks, fellas. Oh, uh, what else is on the radio? Day, hands off the radio. And skirts. Oh, and not skirts. Oh, that's a great attraction. What else have we got on the deck, Ricky? Hang on a second, I think I can fix the problem. Ah, oh, that's more like it. Now we're cooking. Over. Martin Malloy have left the building. <laughs>